right, food and fiber. How cool is that? Dennis was born in 19, uh, uh, 1984, so that should be a recipe for disaster, maybe. <laughs> or maybe <you>. not. <laughs> um, yes, please take a seat. We're just about to start. It's about fiber and noodles and things. Edible. It's going to be awesome. Really, you should, you should sit down and have a look. Um, maybe we can, uh, we can uh, uh, encourage him to give him a big round of applause. Dennis the Bell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Um, I'll explain a bit about uh, how I got here later on. But um, first of all, really nice to be given this, given this stage to present my work, uh, which I will now um, continue to do. So. <laughs> um, um, I also brought some goodies, and since we don't have a full house here, maybe uh, if you are interested, you can hook me up or uh, catch me after the talk, and uh, we can exchange some uh, some goods, which I will also present. So first off, uh, my name is Dennis de Bel. I'm an artist from uh, Rotterdam, the Netherlands, and. Um, yeah, I mostly work with uh, technology because I'm yeah interested in how technology shapes our world, um, but also how to make it your own and to how to to, to sort of grasp what's what's going on. Just curiosity, I guess. Um, and I will show you some um, um, uh, some works that that sort of led up to um, what I'm going to present here today now. Um, the fiberglass noodle networking. Whoop. So, in I have I have to speak a bit. <laughs> so in about I don't know if you can see it. That's sort of the idea as well. So in in 2010, um, I did this project uh, together with Jody. Um, it's a, a duo of uh, net artists, and um, we had an exhibition, and we were checking out the location through uh, Google Street View, and yeah, we saw all these like these Google uh, watermarks everywhere in public space. Um, so we thought, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a, it's an easy joke, but um, it's kind of nice to uh, sort of reenact this uh, copywriting of our public space uh, for real using an, uh, like a commercial uh, airplane that flew with this banner that was 25 meters long and five meters high uh, over the city. And it's also funny that uh, this was in 2010 and yeah, we could only find uh, pictures that were uh, um, like one year old, so from 2009. So everything you see in Google Street View is also already outdated, of course. So it's sort of a fake snapshot of reality and it's copyrighted by Google. Um, two years before, I, uh, I already started sort of experimenting with, with food and uh, electronics. Um, and it was more like sort of an uh, exercise in, in form follows function. So I had these uh, crackers and I used to do some little bit of soldering just to get to know electronics. Um, um, yeah. I put one and two together, and um, uh, normally you use like this breadboard for to quickly prototype your electronic circuits. Uh, and then I saw these crackers, and I thought, "Wow, this this is just this is just perfect." So now you have an uh, an edible circuit board um, you can eat after your finished uh, prototyping. So you um, you 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 will never be hungry while prototyping. Um, in 2014, I, uh, I participated in the Art Hack Day Hackathon at the uh, Transmediale Festival. This was this 24-hour uh, hackathon where you had to make something. And um, yeah, I had this idea to sort of combine um, like our everyday technology, like this iPhone, with something super basic, something super archaic, 
like the most um, uh, archaic form of communication. Uh, so I, I decided to make a sort of add-on for your iPhone uh, or sm any smartphone, uh, which you could use to send uh, smoke messages, so smoke signals. And of course, if you would want to communicate with someone, you had to um, agree upon sort of a protocol. So like one puff is hello, or two puffs is goodbye. Um, and you could also communicate over very long distances if you like link up together and pass on the message, if everyone would use this. Um, and I, I made some other uh, sort of iPhone hacks. I took apart an old iPhone and um, turned it into a, like a spark gap transmitter using a short circuit on the, on the battery. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't really like it because it's, it was a sort of dangerously thin line between sort of a critique and, and advertising almost. Um, so of course, um, a Apple is already uh, sort of a, a caricature of its own nowadays. I mean, come on, wireless earbuds or laptops with one port. So. I mean, uh, like the joke is on them. Um, I, I, I cannot make it more ridiculous than, than they already do. So uh, I, wanted, I wanted something else. Uh, and this was the start of a collaboration project with uh, Roel Roskam Abing. Um, I had made some sort of DIY smartphones using Raspberry Pi, etc. Um, then I met Roel, and he had sort of similar ideas um, about technology and networks and communication. We were in the same um, sort of WhatsApp group where we uh, used to share like weird pictures from stuff we would see on the streets. But yeah, we were totally dependent on, on, on the quirks of, of WhatsApp and, and then Facebook. And we had to update our, our operating system to use the latest version, blah, blah, blah. And we were really tired of this. Um, and yeah, we, we sort of saw um, also that, that in this whole sort of app uh, environment that, that the World Wide Web was actually um, already dead. So we started, we wrote a proposal to the Creative Fund, Creative Industries Fund of Netherlands, uh, together with Worm Rotterdam. Um, yeah, we wrote a proposal to um, create a sort of offline uh, mesh network communication device, um, which uh, we got a grant for, for one year, research and building prototypes. And this is one of them. So. The project is called Messenger, so as in Mesh, Messenger. Um, after one year of coding, we sort of had it working. We had these little portable uh, travel routers with uh, OpenWRT on it, and they could mesh together. And if two of these devices would meet in the or would, would come like close to each other, they would exchange files, synchronize their content. Um, and yeah, after one year, we had um, like this sort of crappy Python code and it was sort of working. Um, but yeah, but then, I mean, then you end up with sort of look at the nice interface we have to our app and it works. So we, we needed to sort of, we wanted to sort of visualize how this, um, how the system could be used. So. Um, we decided to sketch some scenarios and make like physical prototypes, uh, working prototypes with this scenario. And this is uh, the first one. This is the Feline file sharing uh, network. Um, so it uses a Feline carrier to carry data through the neighborhood. And the idea is that you um, send out your cat at night, let it roam the neighborhood, and uh, meet up with other cats and exchange uh, files. So the next morning when your cat gets home, you have the latest uh, Game of Thrones or whatever on your, on your cat. Um, so there's a little, little router on his back and two battery packs. 
the cat didn't like it. So I guess, uh, yeah, I, I won't be doing any anything with animals anymore. This is over. Um, this is another another prototype. So we built this little uh, open WRT router in the in the sole of the shoe, with the idea that um, yeah, like the carrier of the device, so the human or animal will become the network infrastructure itself. Uh, I guess nowadays you can do it do this with a ESP that's the size of a postage stamp, but back then we didn't have such nice goodies. Um, there will also be a quiz, by the way, after the after the talk. So if you can guess the name of this prototype, um, you can win some uh, PCBs I used to um, to make this. So actually, this this messenger um, project, it, um, it it was a sort of parallel network. It uh, made use of. Uh, it had a hotspot on the on the OpenWRT device, which you could uh, visit using any smartphone or laptop, any device with a browser. Um, so we also had to sort of design this interface. But yeah, we we sort of never got around this this whole paradigm of of the app, because it has to fit a sort of certain screen, etc. And um, yeah, it, it has to be user friendly somehow. Um, but on the other hand, it was so unuser friendly that none of our friends actually used the system we made. So it was a nice exercise. But uh <coughs> excuse me. Um, so that said, it was it was more sort of a, an exercise in uh, user interface design. Um, using like very high high up layers to um, to um, to send data and to do some nice stuff, um, but yeah, we really wanted to to sort of grasp the technology we we were working with. Um, so that's when we decided to uh, get our radio amateur license and follow this course at the uh, Verum, which I can highly recommend if you. Uh, want to learn electronics or basic radio stuff, take this course and yeah, you will know everything within a year. It's super amazing. Um, so we got um, sort of um, more, a bit more down the stack. So from sort of software layers to more hardware layers, excuse me. And we started um like researching um like obsolete uh networking technologies such as packet radio but also like normal f m radio and how to uh interface it with like modern devices uh to create networks transmit data etc and this is this is one of the projects we did um, we made a little board and a cheap uh, combined with a cheap Baofeng uh, radio um you could actually still um like recreate 1970s aloha net uh computer networks using like only this cheap radio and a small board that um that triggers the radio to transmit or receive and this is all possible because um back in the day you had like a computer uh, or a terminal and you had a modem and you had a terminal node controller that would switch on and off the radio. But nowadays uh, we just have a computer and we use a sound modem. Uh, so this is sort of a, a piece of software that acts like a modem uh, that translates um, binary data into um, um, uh, sound waves. So frequency shift keying, uh, which you can then transmit yeah, using any radio um, and the software would also take care of the of the switching of the radio, because um, funny thing is, when making radio networks, um, they actually don't know where they are in the network, um, so they are sort of resilient, um, but there's also quite some overhead, especially when you use like modern HTTP protocols. 
um, because there are constantly this, these acknowledgement, these exchanges to check if a packet arrived or not. So it, it's, it's a bit slow and clumsy. Um, but it, it, it's, it's just amazing that uh, the protocol we used, AX25, is still like standard in the, in the Linux kernel. Um, so we made a little how-to book. I guess you can download it on my website. I'm not sure actually. Um, then we did some more, made some more jokes. So um, this started as sort of a um, reaction on all the all the free hotspots um, we have in Rotterdam. So every cafe wants to sell more uh, lattes. So they give you, in return, they give you uh, free Wi-Fi. So you can work there and spend some money there on coffee. And we thought like, ah, oh wow, it would be nice to, like, what would the Wi-Fi logo be if you, instead of wireless, you had to use a cable. So we just, we made this GIF um, as a joke. So we used the, the Wi-Fi sort of logo, and instead of Wi-Fi said Ethernet. Um, but then uh, a bar in uh, Rotterdam, Worm, um, they were actually really interested in the, in the device. Um, so they said, yeah, here's some money, build it for us. So uh, we built this. It's the world's first um, Ethernet spot. And um, you, can, yeah, you can connect to it um, if you're in Rot Rotterdam. It's in Worm. Um, What's what's really nice about this is that it sort of started as a joke, um, but then we build it, and then you start to see what you have actually done, um, because actually immediately immediately the the press uh, was sort of alarmed, um, because it was in the in sort of the uh, the, the 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 news that um, the Wi-Fi in the train was unsafe, like public hi uh, hotspots were dangerous to use. Um, so the press, the Volkskrant and, uh, and the local newspaper, they, they came to interview us and said, ah, so this is sort of uh, a, a privacy, uh, privacy act. So you cannot be hacked if you use this. Um, so yeah, we were like, mm, now you, you can be hacked, but I mean, at least you know that the the one who's hacking is like next to you because the cables are quite short um and another thing is of course that um yeah most modern devices they don't even have uh have an ethernet port anymore so um yeah it shows you how this this obsolescence or planned obsolescence obsolescence uh manifests itself um really really quickly so this was uh, yeah 3 years ago and yeah, it never gets used, of course. <laughs> um, in the meantime, our collaborative research project, um, yeah, was taking like uh, two years longer than uh, than actually planned. And we collected like all our prototypes in this sort of booklet. I brought two. If you want one, uh, hit me up. Um, so it's a sort of collection of our prototypes and it contains also um, sort of manuals and how-tos and schematics to recreate some of the things yourself. And there's also a nice CD-ROM with bonus material, so if you can still read it. Um, for this project we also uh, went to China um, as every person who is working with technology should do. Um, it was super crazy. It's, it's a whole other talk. If I, I'm not getting too much into this. Um, but let's say maybe the picture on the right says enough. So we visited some, uh, some factories, mainly of uh, like Sanjay products. So um, yeah, we're, we're especially looking for weird, weird stuff, weird combinations of, of electronics, phones with radios in them, etc. And we also yeah, found these stickers 
So if you have trouble with uh, getting a certification, you can just yeah get a pile of stickers and put it on it. So they had like FCC stickers, they're a bit shiny. Uh, CEE, Rose, looks really dodgy. Um, but on the other hand, of course, everything gets made there as well. So they actually need to make these stickers because all the manufacturers are actually there. So um, what did we eat while in China? Can anyone guess? Noodles? That's correct. So um, we found these um, cellophane noodles, or man mung bean starch noodles, or in Holland they're actually called glass noodles. And I I have some like wholesale uh, package here. You can buy in any Chinese supermarket. Um. um yeah, what fascinated me about it that it's like super flexible and it's actually super transparent. So if you shine a light on it, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it. Nah. Fuck, demo, demo failed. <laughs> um, so, again, the fiberglass connection or the glass noodle glass fiber noodle joke was sort of yeah quickly made um of course yeah a joke without a nice conclusion is is not a very good joke so yeah i bought a packet of these guys and um yeah fired up the the old arduino made a sort of light table setup and um yeah try to with a led on one side and an ldr on the other side try to transmit some light through this uh, through this fiber this noodle and actually uh, it actually worked like the first time and I was yeah quite amazed <laughs> um, but it worked very unreliably so so um, um, I guess it had to has to do with uh, the calibration uh, of the light, the ambient light, uh, but yeah, I, I never really got it got it working. Um, but I, I got some Morse uh, Morse code uh, sent through it. But but yeah, nothing I could show here actually. Um, so what I needed was a bigger noodle. Um, at least that's what I thought. So. Um, I try to, uh, I say experiment, but it's it's more of sort of a tunnel vision in trying to get this thing to work. Uh, I experimented with like making my own uh, making my own noodles. Wow, can you see this? Oh yeah, it's a bit okay. Um, should have photographed them on a black background, I guess. Um, so. I first started with um, like with the main ingredient of these noodles, uh, mung bean starch, um, and yeah, when you cook this, it becomes this sort of um, uh, custard-like, like like liquid. So this non-Newtonian fluid that's fluid, but when you like hit it or compress it, it becomes solid. Um, but so yeah, I, I couldn't really work with it. Um, so I I, I um, mixed in some like wheat wheat starch and it became like this yellow like opaque stick. Um, I tried some potato uh, starch um, mixed with some dry stuff. Potato starch becomes this sort of um, uh, glue you use for a uh, wallpaper, and it really work out. Um, then I, I made this, this jelly, this wallpaper glue, and put it in the fridge, and then dried it in the oven, and yeah, it, it got close, but not yet. Um, longer, longer cooking, didn't work out. Um, then I, Ru had the genius idea to make a sort of uh, metal mold, and 
just uh, compress all these noodles together to form sort of a super thick super noodle. Uh, I actually brought one, but uh, can't find it. Is it in here? Um, did it work? Mm, not really. So I used uh, gelatin as well, which was really disgusting. Please avoid using this. <laughs> um, I tried agar agar, which looked looked really really promising. It's actually um, the same stuff I showed here. So this is agar agar. It's a bit. It's used for. Um, um, as like a, a, a feeding ground for bacteria to test bacteria um, and um, also in food so I cooked this and um, sucked it up in a, in a little silicone tube and then um, pressed it out into uh, ice cold water and then you have this which looks really good um, but did it work? No. <laughs> so I spent, I think, a year, year and a half trying these recipes, trying how to, how to do this. And I yeah, just couldn't manage to, to send any light through it. I also got, yeah, I switched out the, uh, the LED for a laser. Um, I switched out the, the, the LDR, the light dependent resistor for a light transistor which works yeah, a bit like a solar panel, but then like one, one cell. But it, it, it just didn't work. And yeah, the problem was that my talk, this talk was already accept accepted here, but I didn't really have anything to show you guys. So in, in sort of one last um, resort, I applied for this um, artist in residence at uh, Class Institute for uh, Molecular Biology. I thought, yeah, I mean, these guys, they, they must know uh, how this stuff works, right? Um, but yeah, uh, it was declined. Um, so I found this video. This is actually how it's made. So he has this uh, starch liquid which is like this non-Newtonian fluid that's fluid, but if you hit it, it becomes solid. So he has some sort of funnel, and he just makes sure it, it stays together when it dr drips out, and he puts it in boiling water, and chops it off, boils it for one minute, and then puts it in cold water. Um, yeah, I don't have these skills yet, and yeah. My house would become such a mess if I try this. Uh, it, al it already is a mess. Um, so when I try it um, with, with the regular noodles you can buy in the shop, uh, and if you cook them, it actually really works. Um, but it, yeah, for me it was sort of a hassle uh, to take like a water cooker with me, uh, cook some noodles here, and hope that it works because they, they also easily break when they're wet. And I didn't want to bring wet noodles in my bag. So I was looking for something um, that could, could bring like reproducible results. Um, so I found this, um, I, I looked into sugar because it's also edible and translucent. Um, I did some tests with uh, we're just cooking sugar and making sort of uh, like um, hard candy um, in which you have to cook sugar until it's 300 degrees and then quickly stop it. Um, but yeah, it just became like brown shit. Uh, it was an epic fail. But then I found out these, um, um, these YouTube videos of super nice ladies who decorate cakes and they use this special sugar called isomalt, which is actually an, an alcohol. And it's a um, sort of relatively new um, sugar uh, replacement, um, which, is, which is sort of um, interpreted as you at, uh, by your body as a, as a fiber. 
so your teeth they won't rot and you don't get fat and it tastes delicious and it's sort of uh, nice to work with it becomes like super transparent so what you do is you buy a, a batch of this stuff I don't know if you can see it um, you put it in a microwave for like a minute until it starts to boil then it's like 300 degrees um, then you have to sort of cool it and, and pull it into noodles um, for which you need actually this, this sort of rig which is a, a heat lamp that will keep the sugar warm enough so it, it, it stays malleable otherwise it just becomes super hard uh, I can show you the process so you pour it and then you fold it until it's cooled off a bit and then you can uh, yeah you can pull you can make all nice all kinds of nice animals for your cakes but you can also make uh, edible network cables from it um, so on the right there like uh, pulling pulling the sugar in sort of the same way as you could make like uh, like wheat noodles pasta And this was the first test. <laughs> so this is using a yeah, Chinese uh, laser pointer. And uh, yeah, it, it, it looked so promising. And I hope it is. So I can do a, a live demo for you guys. Um, so the, the setup I have now is actually... Um, yeah, uh, one one direction setup. Um, I could make this bidirectional um, um, as it is now, but yeah, it's a proof of concept, and it's still a work in progress. Um, so, what it does, um, I use my computer um, with a sound modem, so a program called Mini Modem that will turn like binary data into um, audio fre uh, frequency shift keying so uh, two tones that represents uh, a one and a zero um, you can just pipe any file into the into the program and it will send out um, sound um, then I um, I just connect uh, the audio uh, to a laser I just pump the audio into the laser so it gets amplitude modulated which will send out this amplitude modul modulated laser light um, which is received by the phototransistor on the other side that is connected to a like LM386 uh, um, audio amplifier that will amplify the signal generated by the, by the light hitting the transistor uh, and turns it into sound that I can uh, put into uh, a sound modem again and reverse the process, so turn it into uh, data. Uh, so I have, I have some GIFs for in case the demo doesn't work, but I guess we can just go straight to the demo. Uh, but here you can see sort of the, the process. So um, I have my uh, 90 degrees noodle over here. Check and mount in this table. Um, I'll just let let you let you hear the the audio for a second. Um, maybe it's a bit loud. So I will pipe the the manual for mini modem into itself and transmit it uh, at ten bouts, so ten symbols. A uh, second, and it sounds like this. So this is the 1200 and 2200 kilo uh, hertz. Um, so. I wonder if it works. 
So I just put the, um, the laser in my audio output and the transistor in my audio input. And power the amplifier and the laser. There's a lot of light here. I'm not sure it's going to work, but can you see it glow? Something is working at least. Um, so uh, Roo wrote this nice uh, sort of benchmark benchmarking tool so you can check out how fast you're transmitting. So you can test out different noodles or lasers. So I will just um, yeah transmit uh, um, the manual file into mini modem and run the benchmark. Uh, so, on the bottom here, you can see the, the incoming symbols. So, it will take uh, 10,000 seconds still to transmit the whole manual. It's a bit slower. Maybe we can try to do it a bit faster. So, 100, 100 baud. <laughs> no, it's too fast. Ah, <laughs> oh, shame, shame, shame. Okay, maybe we can do 20. Come on. Ah, oops. Uh. Oh, yes. <laughs> so the question marks are is just gibberish data. So yeah, this works. <laughs> I'll just let it run, see if we, if we, if we can finish. <laughs> uh, do you have a question? One moment, please. Can you talk into the mic? Yeah, I didn't see the microphone. Uh, did you try uh, polishing the end or of the uh, noodles to be flat at 90 degrees? Nope. <laughs> it's, um, I was so happy it worked <laughs> that, 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 I, yeah, that it's just, just as is. Um, it's actually not so, not so transparent in the end. And also, um, you can, this, this isomalt keeps for, for years and years, um, but it's, it's really, um, 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 susceptible to um, like moisture in the air. Uh, yeah, I can already see it on these these older samples. They're starting to to become like um, whitish. So you also have always have to carry this um, yeah silicia bags uh, to preserve your your noodles. Um, so what did I sort of learn from this? Um, making uh, like real noodles like this is mega hard, um, but I'm 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 not giving up. I'm going to try it again. Uh, modulating a laser, on the other hand, is super easy. Uh, it it it's actually fun to do, and um, actually this this whole setup works way better without the noodle, just using the air to transmit the laser. Um, than with a noodle. So yeah, I would suggest you looking into like uh, optical uh, connections to play with that. It's, it's really fun. Um, the only problem is that um, like laser is uh, just as radio is a line of sight communication tool. Um, so if you want to go around corners and meet your neighbors or hook up with your neighbors, then um, yeah, you need something like this because the noodle, it can actually 
yeah, bend the light uh, around corners. Um, I don't know what what the maximum angle of of normal fiber is, but I I think you can make loopings with this with this stuff. Um, yeah, and, and besides that, it's of obviously a nice conversation piece to to talk about technology and food. So uh, as I said before, um, yeah, I just I I just had to get this working. Um, it started off as a joke and. I don't know. Every every joke has a sort of uh, truth in it, so yeah, it it, it it must work, and it sort of does. Um, it's also also always fun to try something uh, no one thinks is possible, and um, yeah, as you see, it's it's possible. Um, I learned a great deal um, in sort of um, yeah, bare bones networking and small electronics. Um, and it's a, uh, it's the best of all. It's sort of a great tactic to to speak at festivals like this, and meet super nice people in the meantime, or in the process. Um, obviously, um, yeah, in sort of this uh, DIY offline privacy networking uh, arms race, um, pulling fiber is is the next big thing. So what is the next big thing? Um, I actually got accepted for an uh, artist in residence in, in China, in Beijing, for next year. So I will definitely try to learn how to make proper noodles. Um, and I want to make it uh, like full duplex, like do some, some proper, um, make, some make it fit into the networking stack, into the OC model. Um, and of course, just make DIY regular fiber using glass, like this guy on the right. Um, only thing is that, yeah, these noodles, when, when making them, it's like 300 degrees, and glass is a bit hotter, so I, I need some help with that, I guess. Um, I see some questions. Of some people who are just one moment, please. Could you wait till the mic is on, or it, it's at least on, get I think. a bit closer to the mic? Maybe you can turn it up. Give me now. Better. Okay. Thanks. Um, have you heard already of the people who are doing 3D printing with Isomalt? No. Oh. That could be a help for you. Please. Oh, that's super good. I was actually thinking of this because it's it's about the same temperature as like PLA or. Nice. Um, so yeah, the, the schematics and the benchmark tool and uh, Gerber files uh, you can find on my website, or this is the, the, the direct URL. Um, ah, then it's time for the quiz. So if you, if you know the name of this um, messenger prototype, please walk to the mic and uh, have a guess. And you can win a set of um, transmitter and receiver uh, PCBs to recreate this yourself. <laughs> Is it SneakerNet? Yay! Yay. <laughs> whoop whoop! <laughs> nice! Uh, let me see. Do you want to make some uh, to have some more questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, th I think or it's got time for questions oh. actually. There it is. So it's uh, the schematics and bill of materials. Uh, any more questions, please? Nobody. Wow. I have some more boards, so you can also kindly ask if you want one. How long will you be here, Dennis, and where can we find you? Uh, yeah, really good question. I will be here all day, but not tomorrow. Um, you can catch me around the coffee uh, tent, I, gu I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, question? You have a question? 
Um, did you look into the different uh, breaking indexes of the materials? Uh, no, but I should. Because I saw a similar technique to make like the hard candy that has dots in it. They also put it together, roll it and then stretch it to make layers. Yeah, yeah actually this, this stretching is sort of... Um, I, I'm not sure if it's positive or, or negative for the... For the um, I, I guess it only sort of diffuses the light more. Um, but it also it seems as if it's because if you bend it and stretch it, you will introduce like little air bubbles in it, and it, yeah, you stretch these air bubbles, so you create sort of canals through which uh, light can travel. I guess. <laughs> Did you try much thinner noodles? To get a total reflection. What kind of noodles? Did you try much, much thinner noodles instead of thicker ones to get a, a nice total reflection mm. uh, between noodle and air? Uh, yeah, yeah, I tried this one, um, but it's it's super hard to to line up with uh, with the laser actually. Yeah, I, I can pass some around, or maybe you can pass some around for me. Um, yeah, so for me, uh, it was just using brute force, try to pump as much light through something, uh, a medium as possible. Um, but yeah, the next step is definitely just trying to make my own like glass fiber. Uh, maybe I should have started with this and then move along from there. But I w mostly, most of the time I work the other way around and just come up with a crazy idea and try to make it. Uh, I was just wondering, do you have any plans to attempt to develop a transatlantic fiber optic <laughs> noodle? <laughs> that was the question well, of the day. <laughs> it, it <laughs> I was sort of hoping, hoping this question would arise. So, yeah, I already made like a, a mock-up. So this is sort of how it would lo look. This is the, the dissection of the, the multi-mode uh, undersea uh, fiber cable. So it's also uh, shielded. And there are multiple strands in there. Um, yeah, it would be nice, definitely. I think this is the future. No more. No more. OK. Oh, uh, oh, one in the back, uh, yeah. Have you considered using licorice as shielding for this cable? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I guess um, a bit of shielding would really help, indeed. Um, but then, yeah, I, I could just fake it and use a, use a, a normal uh, electrical wire. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I wanted to 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 show the sort of naked noodle to you guys but good tip thank you i write it down i i actually also looked into these uh, media converters that uh, convert uh, like ethernet to fiber um there are some some projects by a hungarian guy i think who converted these devices for uh, optical connections but uh, I, I couldn't get it to work. It's, I think it's really specific, like the wavelengths. And so if someone can help me with this, then please show me the, w show me the light. OK. Ah. So uh, you know, actual professional fiber te technicians have really sophisticated test equipment that will tell you all the characteristics of your fiber. I'd have you tried hooking this up to like a real OTDR or a real spectrograph? Does anyone at camp have one? Maybe go and get a knock. <laughs> Does an anyone have one? I, I should. They're, o they're only like, you know, 50,000 euros, so like no big deal. I, I should visit the network guys, I guess.
And I already saw these super nice kits, these boxes that um, like um, to to fuse the the fibers in the field on on Alibaba. I I should really uh, get one of those as well. Well, thank you for your splendid creativity, and I really thank loved you. your talk. Thank and you I so much. And I hope you have a nice day here. And uh, give him a definitely big applause. Thank you.